Cool. <laughs> All right, you guys ready? Yeah. Ready. All right, let's rock and roll. Here we go. Ready in three, two, one. Today we're blessed to have a really cool Hillwood story. And uh, we're going to talk to the Moore brothers, and I'm going to let them introduce themselves. Okay. Uh, thanks a lot, Cliff. Uh, I'm Mike Moore. Uh, was nicknamed Moose by Coach McKinney back in probably 1966. So I go by Moose with um, all my friends and my wife and my family. <laughs> Everybody. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, graduate of class of 68 here at Hillwood High School. So we started uh, when the doors opened in 59 and, and we came here in 62 in the seventh grade. And I'm Pat Moore. Uh, I'm Moose's twin brother. Can't yes, we're yeah, fraternal. Uh, we're, we don't look alike. Didn't at Hillwood and don't now. Uh, but we're extremely close. Uh, obviously, uh, a graduate of 68, Hillwood, uh, great memories uh, and a great uh, place to kind of help build our character when we're growing up. Talk a little bit about uh, growing up in this area and kind of what led you before you got to Hillwood. Go ahead. Well, uh, and we'll, we'll go back and forth. We interrupt each other a lot. <laughs> uh, we went to H.G. Uh, Hill uh, Elementary School right next door. And uh, in the ninth, and when we were uh, in 59, when these doors opened, we're in the fourth grade. So we're seeing the school being built. Uh, and, and in fact, the next year, our older sister, who was two years older, started at Hillwood High School in the seventh grade. So we knew Hillwood High School. Uh, we lived about a, a mile and a half from here on Johnson Hall Road. Um, this was, uh, we were excited, we were part of the community, uh, we were athletes, we played uh, sports at H.G. Hill Elementary, but we, we got moved to West Mead yeah. uh, in our sixth grade. That was, that was a big disappointment for us. Yeah. We wanted to stay at H.G. Hill, but we went to the new school and spent the sixth grade at West Mead and then uh, moved here. Yeah, yeah and we, um, we, we got to Nashville and got to West Mead because our mother had remarried in 1957. Uh, after our father was killed in the Air Force and she moved back to Nashville and our stepfather said I want to move you to this new development over in Westmead and it was called uh, Hillwood in Hillwood area. So you know we we really remember great memories as a seven, eight, nine year old boy growing up in this area. We could ride our bikes to school which was cool. I understand that uh, right before you came to Hillwood there was an opportunity that you're uh stepfather presented about you guys going to NBA, but uh, you, you had something to tell him about. Uh, yeah. You were, you were Kelly to the core. Yeah, we, uh, um, our stepfather had had us positioned to go to, to NBA in our seventh grade, and I, I don't really remember a lot about it. I'm, I'm sure we went over and looked at it, and then we said to him, or this is how I remember it anyway, he said, man, that's, that's a boys' school. That's an all-boys' school. Why would we want to go to all-boys' school? And so, you know, we wanted to be with our friends, uh, friends that we had already developed in H.G. Hill. And so, uh, I think he tried to get us to go the seventh and the eighth and the ninth grade and then finally gave up. He realized that we weren't going to go. Uh, we were going to stay at Hillwood. Yeah, I, I think, uh, I don't remember the girl part. That's Pat's <laughs> side of the story. But I do, I, and I don't think we ever looked at the school. I, I don't think it was ever a question. MBA was obviously very uh, well thought of, great athletic program. But uh, Hillwood was home, yeah, and uh, and that's where we wanted to stay and wanted to play sports, and so I'm not sure we even looked at NBA. Yeah. I think it was pretty emphatically that we were, we're not going to NBA. Yeah. We're going to go to Hillwood High School. You were Hilltoppers at home. We were Hilltoppers. Yeah, that's from right. Go and uh, and we could ride a bike. Why would we want to? Yeah, and we got very entrenched in the school in every capacity. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that as far as your high school days at Hillwood. Well, what were you involved with? And a little sure. Bit of That's a, well, the class of 68 is a great, uh, I was a class president, and, uh, and we've been very active in, even in the last uh, decade uh, by giving money to the school, uh, scholarship-wise, for the kids that uh, were in the top class. But Pat, Pat and I came in, and we were athletes, so Pat was a great basketball player. Uh, I played football. Pat played football his freshman year. Uh, he, you could play your 7th and 8th grade teams, junior high, if you will, even though we're in the same uh, campus. You couldn't play varsity football until you were in 10th grade. So we played 7th, um, 8th, and ninth grade. Pat was a great basketball player, went to basketball. I, I tried to go after basketball, and the coaches wouldn't let me. They knew I was a football <laughs> player. And so, a baseball player. And, and baseball. So uh, we, uh, we played uh, sports here. Pat was the captain of the basketball team, and I was the captain of the football team. Um, and we had great mentors, mm -hmm. and, I, and Pat was 
Can yeah, you know, um, we, we've had an incredible opportunity. We'll maybe talk a little bit about our Air Force background in a, a little bit, but the character um, that we think really developed started with the mentors that we had in our life. Our dad had died at a young age, our stepfather was older, and so coaches uh, and teachers became mm -hmm. kind of like fathers to us. Yeah. And so we have some unbelievable stories that have lasted our entire lifetime with some of the relationships that we met here in coaches and or uh, teachers. Yeah. And they and became, you know, they so became I, our mentors. So uh, Coach uh, Marvin Jeanette, uh, who's, who's since passed, and Coach Charlie McKinney, who was, uh, who was my football coach, um, Coach Dickerson, Coach Sweet, these were all guys that Coach Zapp, uh, and, and Coach Zapp. So Fred Zapp was my baseball coach, and my saw so in my sophomore year was my mm -hmm. biology teacher. Uh, he's passed, God rest his soul. But uh, my daughter married his son, so Fred became. We all became part of the family yeah. years later, uh, which was just fascinating to us. And uh, but that was the kind of person that. If you're going to be married to in-law, you want it to be Coach Zapp or yeah. any of the coaches that were here. They were mentors to us, and we were here uh, when Kennedy was killed. We were here when uh, for the for walk on the moon. I mean, all these the historical things in our country were from yeah, here. Right. I remember trying to join the Navy in the, in the junior year in high school <laughs> because the mic was was captured by the North Koreans, and I thought, man, we got to go to. A, we're still in Vietnam. We're obviously in Vietnam. Yeah. Um, when we left here. Uh, we were good students. I probably wasn't an A student, but I was a good student, and I had character. I'm not sure I was an A or B student. Yeah, but um, we were. We were, uh, but we we were had leadership qualities. Yeah. We went to uh, Auburn University on the GI Bill because our father had been killed on active duty, so uh, we got to go to Auburn, and uh, ROTC was mandatory. But for us, in the way we were raised, we knew we were going to service. Yeah. 1968 was not a pleasant time to be thinking about going to service because of Vietnam, but for us, and I think by the values that we had instilled here at Hillwood High School, because uh, I can name teachers that were in the 82nd Airborne, World War II. These were guys who were our teachers, mm -hmm. and, uh, and they were real men, and they believed in this country, and so that's, that's how we learned, and, and I think that hasn't left this school. That's still here. Maybe not World War II vets, but yeah. there's guys that are still mentors to these young kids. Um, Hillwood's a culture. This is this is a different school. This is not an MBA or an Innsworth. Uh, even though they, Innsworth, of course, is a newer school. MBA is an old school. But this this has pretty unique roots. Uh, I can tell you right now, we can probably go through the 60 years of classes or whatever we've had here, and uh, you'll find a who's who in America of Hillwood High School graduates. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, obviously, we did go to Hill, uh, Hillwood, then to Auburn. Um, uh, I had a chance to play basketball at Auburn for uh, for one year, and you know there was no way that I could have had that opportunity if I hadn't had the opportunity here to to really just mm -hmm. be taught hard work. I wasn't maybe a great basketball player, but I I learned you know that put effort in, and all that came from here. And then uh, we both had the opportunity to serve in the Air Force uh, after our Auburn experience, our ROTC. We both. Uh, had an opportunity to become pilots in the Air Force uh, and both got to live our dream that our dad had done, which was to fly fighters, and so we both became fighter pilots. And again, you know, all of that experience about competition and about camaraderie and about character and God and country and all of that yeah. started here. I, I think the other thing that I, that I got from here, from the trenches of the football field, and I got two football coaches there that film this, Failure was not an option, hmm. and, and and yet yet we failed. We failed here on, on, on the football field. We, as far we, as the record we, goes, we didn't win a lot of football games. But the truth is, we became men. Because mm -hmm. you know, life is not about success. It's about failure and how you what you learn from that. Yeah. So we had challenges here on the athletic field. Um, didn't but, affect me mentally. It probably made me tough. And so we go to flight school. We learn to fly airplanes. We didn't know how to fly airplanes and flew the hottest things in the world. And I thought that was kind of interesting. A couple of uh, average kids from Hillwood High School could, could fly the hottest things in the world, and we did. Yeah. And we su succeeded at that. 
pretty yeah. unusual for twins to, to be fighter pilots in the Air Force. and, and Killed uh, with high school graduates. Maybe yeah, especially day. after our dad was killed flying one. And our mother just always said, don't ever fly together. Please just <laughs> don't get an airplane together. And we didn't until she passed, and then we started flying together. <laughs> Well, Moose has an airplane yeah. today, so uh, still we, we still fly. For a still while. fly. How long were you in the service? I was in the service for four years and got out at uh, Tel Aviv in the Vietnam, and Moose stayed in for I 20 years. I stayed in for 20. So I, I was, uh, Pat got out, Pat had reached his goal and uh, quicker than I had reached mine. I was a flight instructor after flight school, and I, I had to fly the fighters. So I flew F-15s and F-4s, and I stayed for 20. Had a great career. Um, and then got out and then flew for FedEx for 13 years. What about yourself? Yeah, I, have, I got out in 1976 and went in the insurance and financial services business and literally have been in that business now uh, close to 45 years. And um, it's been an incredible career for me because it's allowed me to do things for, to help people. Um, so Pat's been here since 76. He knows yeah. everybody that ever went to Hillwood High School. So <laughs> our message to you folks out there that have made a lot of money or, got, or you're our age now, don't know what to do with your money, go with high school. Yeah. Because that's what we're here for. Yeah. We, we want to try to get people to realize what this school still means uh, to kids that uh, probably weren't as um, financially uh, uh, well off as we were. And so I think we're here now yeah. to help that. Yeah. Because uh, I will tell you this, and, uh, so our class is 68, for probably five to seven years we gave scholarships. And I'd come over for the senior uh, assembly I was blown away. I mean, these kids were from probably six or eight or ten different countries and dialects and could speak different languages, and they were brilliant, and they were polite, and I said, wow, this, this school is real life. I think we were in somewhat of a bubble when we were here. Yeah. But this is real life here now, and I just I appreciate it. Yeah, we, we love the opportunity to, to both contribute to help uh, really the really the school doesn't have the same kind of ability with PTO clubs and other schools and so for us to be able to help give money that can go right to the students or right to the sports or right to academics whatever area that we you have an interest in we just think it's extremely important and uh, we love supporting the school. We really feel that you guys were kind of passionate about coming and, and taking this time with us as we introduced the very first since 1959 uh, give to Hillwood.com annual fund campaign. We've wow. never had an annual fund. Wow. Yeah, I, and I tell you, when I found out about this, and you made the first uh, Facebook and social media announcement, of course, it hit me hard. So I immediately went to the website um, and contributed money to uh, several programs. The next day, probably 12 hours later, the baseball coach sent me an email thanking me. Mm -hmm. And I, I was blown away by that. Yeah. Because quite honestly, you know, you put money in the internet, it kind of goes wherever it goes. And, uh, but it found its way to the, to the, uh, the head baseball coach, and I appreciated that. Yeah. We've got 1,100 students here now. Wow. Um, you know, all of our students need great support, especially in today's world. I think we really need to really support these young people more than ever, and you guys have a passion for that. Um, I'll, I'll let you guys kind of end with your uh, communication to the fellow alumni, mm -hmm. to the area of business, uh, owners and to the community at large, um, kind of your, uh, your, your challenge to, to come on board with this, uh, this new program as we try to really help these current toppers reach the top. Well, I, I think that I um, haven't done some marketing in, in, my, in my recent past. I would challenge, even if you're a young person, you've graduated, you're out in the workforce, maybe you've gone to college, you're in the workforce, but you know, you give up one Starbucks co a coffee a day. You have 25 bucks. Do that for a month, you can contribute 100 bucks. And you can give it to the audiovisual department, you can give it to the civic department, you, whatever department, wherever you want to send that money, I would appeal to you to do that because we hope Hillwood never goes away. You know, that's our feeling. Um, as I said here, that was in the eighth grade in that classroom next door, and that means a lot to me. So uh, I, would, I would encourage Everyone can do it. Five bucks can go a long way. We can give a thousand, that's even better. But we have a lot of friends and we're retired, semi-retired, yeah. and we know people that are friends of ours that can do the same thing. Yeah, you know, I think we're, we've been extremely blessed. Uh, and, 
we have to acknowledge that, and from that blessing, we are supposed to give back. I mean, that's just, yeah. that's, uh, anybody's faith should, should say that. And so we think that it's time for us to give back to those organizations and, and those places that can make a difference. And I don't think there's any question this is, this is a great need, and you know, we're glad to help, and we, we encourage you to take a look at it, go to the website, and uh, give back. Gentlemen, thank you so much for being here. This has been a privilege to just hear your story uh, in light of the give to hillwood.com annual fund campaign and, and what a blessing it's been to, to spend the time with you. Thank you so much. Thank Thanks you very so much. much. Appreciate you asking us.